Right, let's move on to this session, which is about uh, print and about reading and about um, all the elements that come with it. And I'm going to kick it off with an explanation of what it is that I actually do and uh, what it is that we think about the future of reading and print. This is uh, my company, Innovations in Newspapers. I publish this book every year, which looks at trends in newspapers, papers throughout the world. And we also publish this, uh, Innovations in Magazines, which looks at trends in magazines throughout the world. And we do not come from the advertising world. We're just helping newspapers and magazines to make the transition to the digital age, but without abandoning print. Our slogan, good journalism, is still, is still good business. And my first message to you is that you ignore print at your own risk. We believe the print is eternal. We believe the print is obviously disrupted and going through a terrible transition at the moment. But we do not believe that print is going to die. No medium has ever replaced another medium. It has never happened in the history of communication. And we heard it forever so long. We had theater. Movies came along and said, oh, you know, Hollywood is going to kill theater. Theater today is a multi-billion dollar business in New York, in London. The same thing, television will kill radio. Radio has not died. It was reinvented, reformatted, and still a multi-billion dollar business. Oh, the internet, digital, will kill print. Perhaps the only medium that has died, it, uh, really communications platforms, smoke signals, or, uh, or you know, pigeons, or trial balloons, or the fax machine. But those were devices to communicate. They were not a medium. A medium is a genre, something that you communicate. Obviously, with print is the written word, text with, uh, with television is uh, images, and so on. Print is still alive and well and will remain a profitable option for decades to come, but really not as we know it. And perhaps that's the insight that the platform needs to go through a process of reinvention, than one that we are working on intensely with many clients to do. Still more than 80% of revenues come from print. Still most of your readers, believe it or not, are still buying a printed product when it comes to newspapers and magazines. And we have Paul Rossi with The Economist uh, just this a month ago, they printed this, indicating, if you could see this closely, you can't from the distance that you are, but we see that while circulation is going down, it has plateaued, especially in Latin America and other countries uh, within the region. Uh, in the States, it's gone way down, but again, the insight is that going forward after this process of consolidation, it will stabilize. It's not an endless drop, a drop to an empty pit. This is a false dichotomy, digital versus print. And believe you me, there are Taliban's on each side, yeah? Those people say, oh, everything digital, oh, everything print. Again, coexistence is the answer. But what's happening? We're living through a process of disruptive displacement. The internet is moving into the space of newspapers. Newspapers are moving into the space of magazines. Magazines are moving into the space of books, hard books. And books are moving into the space of art collectors. And it's OK, and it's all right. But one has to really understand how people are now willing and going to consume these devices in future. And of course, everybody's talking about digital first. And we say, yeah, digital first, absolutely. Absolutely. In none of the transformations we do of newspapers and magazines, we advocate that did not embrace every single device uh, of digital uh, and every tablet app and so on. But digital only is not enough. And there are many digital fables that we've heard and that we can identify right now. Remember, remember the paperless office. We also heard that the web must be free. Well, we already have 300 newspapers charging for content and people willing to pay if the content is good. We have magazines through devices online already charging for content and successfully doing so. We've also been told if you build it, they will come and the money will come. And we know the CPMs cannot really sustain the business of journalism and the business of magazines and newspapers throughout the world. And we've also been told that the platform is the message, that Twitter is going to replace newspapers, that Facebook is going to replace magazines. It's not happening. In fact, when you talk to Twitter and Facebook, the biggest drivers of their content are stories done by journalists. They're the ones that start most of the conversations. They're the ones where the conversations end. The biggest followers in every country are journalists. Second to, of course, movie stars. But storytellers are journalists. We also were told that user-generated content will replace journalism. 
It has not happened. It will not happen. You know, if I have a toothache, I don't go to a user-generated dentist. I mean, if I, if I really need to know the truth about what's going on in my country, my politics, my, my life, my future, my economy, the world economy, I don't go to user-generated content. Credibility is still extremely powerful, and it has tremendous permanence going forward. And, and I got this from uh, one of my uh, gurus, who is this, this Japanese genius, uh, and I talked to Tomoka, and I asked him about this issue, and he told me, Juan, we knew this in Japan a long time ago, where the user-generated mantra began. It says, just because you give somebody paper and pencil, it doesn't mean that they become writers. And it's so, it's true, especially for titles. And we also see a trend where we're going to move, we believe, from the digital to the physical world, from digits back to atoms. And again, I don't say this as one replacing the other. But what is happening in the world? What's happening is that humans cannot ingest, let alone digest, any more data every day. I'm a visiting fellow at Oxford University, and we did the study four years ago, and we reached the conclusion that two years ago, we had reached you know, saturation when it comes to digits. We are data rich, but information poor. And what's happening is that people are associating digital devices with work. And we think that the future is entertainment through digital devices. Yes, but there's another, another way of teaching that. And humans learn through touch. We learn by touch, by permanence, by presence. And um, I present uh, the can lines every year, and I have an opportunity to sit with a lot of uh, leading advertising genius. And I was talking to a chat with uh, PNG, and he was telling me, Juan, my problem is that newspapers, magazines, advertisers come to me and tell me, I can offer you one million Facebook followers, two million Twitter followers, and so on and so on.